simply one of the greatest athletes of all time, owner of numerous records in the history of sport, and a gentleman both on and off the court. Today in our Hero's Journey episode, we're telling the story of Roger Federer, but also bringing some lesser known points of his career that shaped him to be who he is today. Was Roger destined to be a living tennis legend? Born in Basel, Switzerland on August 8, 1981, Roger Federer started playing tennis at 8 years old and moved in 1995 to Ecublens in the French region of the country to join the national tennis program. After winning the national championship twice in the 12-year-old category, his parents encouraged him to pursue a career. But the beginning was not easy as he was still learning the French language and was living in another family's house, needing emotional support from his parents with whom he spoke every day on the phone. Initially, our hero also faced challenges with his own attitude and temperament on the court. He was known for his frustration and emotional outbursts. His transition to a calmer and more focused athlete was aided by mentors like Peter Carter, who helped refine his game and attitude, and later by coaches like Ivan Ljubicic. Roger Federer was known on and off the court as an almost imposing boy. The Swiss who throughout his career maintained an aura of deification generated from impeccable tennis and chivalrous attitudes also had to overcome a dark past. The first version of Federer is perhaps the least known of all, seen with platinum blonde hair and possessing anxious and explosive attitude that left rackets destroyed as well as arguments with their referees and other players. The Swiss began to build a reputation as a bad boy within the circuit. It was in 1996 that, already speaking French more fluently and with greater emotional intelligence, his effort began to pay off. He emerged victorious from both the Swiss Winter and Summer Championships in the 16-year-old category. He repeated the feat next year and also achieved his first international success at the tournament in Prato, Italy. During his adolescence, he reached the number one position in the world in the junior category in 1998, after winning the Wimbledon tournament singles and doubles and achieving good results in others. Finally, 1999 Federer reached his first season as a professional, being the youngest tennis player among the top 100 that year. Curiously, Federer was very hyperactive and considered somewhat crazy. He wouldn't stop singing and fooling around. As his first physical trainer has stated in interviews, he didn't come to physical training and I had to go get Federer at home. He was so stubborn that you had to punish him in some way. It was complicated years until he matured, remembered Paul Dorochenko in the late 1990s. After some bitter defeats, where he realized that his performance worsened due to his anger control that made him lose valuable points in matches, Federer decided to change. The last straw was a match against an Argentine named Franco Squillari. After losing two sets, Federer ended up breaking his racket. As he himself has told about that situation, I was so angry with my performance that I lost that match. I had a terrible attitude, made many wrong decisions, especially on match point. That defeat was costly for our hero who was eliminated from the competition, but it became a turning point in his journey. Thanks to that moment of crisis, he decided to change. The process of getting my mental strength uh, you know, going um, took me, I'd say, almost three years, a good three years to figure myself out on a court. You know, how am I happy? I always call it the fire and ice situation, you know, the fire wanting to win, being excited after a good point and the ice coolness of accepting losses, accepting bad shots, accepting the crowd, the tough cir circumstances. And I think I found the right balance after three years on tour and I, I looked in the long term. I hope to play for 15, 20 years and I just um, decided that I was going to act that way and behave that way on a tennis court so I would never lose matches because of my mental strength. After this change of posture and mentality, in 2003 his life changed completely. After winning the Wimbledon tournament for the first time, Roger Federer truly made his mark in the history of world tennis. In fact, that year he was considered the Rolls Royce of tennis courts according to international press. The year 2004 ended up being marked as the year when Roger rose to the top of the ATP rankings for the first time. On February 2nd, 2004, he moved up to the first place and did not leave it until 2008. The bad boy from Basel became His Majesty, the tennis legend. Editors and commentators from all sports newspapers, ecstatic with the consecutive victories of the new champion, stated that Switzerland had gained a new hero. Are you kidding? From close range? You've got to be kidding me! 
Ray. Oh, oh incredible. How has he pulled that off? During his victorious journey in the sport, Federer faced great rivals several times. Federer's rivals such as Rafael Nadal, Novak Djokovic and Andy Murray also acted as indirect teachers. Competing against those other athletes forced Federer to constantly review and improve his tactics and technique. Each of them had distinct strengths that challenged Federer to develop responses and adaptations. For example, Nadal's heavy forehand and tenacity required Federer to improve his physical conditioning and defensive play, hence the new backhand in 2017. These opponents tested him to the maximum, but also propelled his evolution as a player. In addition to fierce competition with other great tennis players, our hero was tested to overcome difficult battles against injuries. Roger Federer faced several injuries throughout his career, including back and knee problems which had significant impacts on his performance and professional choices. In 2016, for example, a knee injury surgery that kept him off the courts for a long season, leading him to miss important events such as the Olympic Games and the US Open. These physical adversities not only limited his playing time but also required careful management of his calendar and playing style. Although everyone remembers Nadal for his fighting spirit, Federer always showed remarkable resilience, adapting to maintain a high competitive level. His ability to win major tournaments again after recovery periods like the 2017 Australian Open demonstrates his determination to overcome these physical limitations and continue to influence the world of tennis. Adding up all the trophies raised during his career, Roger Federer stood on the top podium 103 times. He also competed in four Olympics in his resume. He didn't win the gold medal in singles, but the gold came in Beijing, China in 2008. Alongside Stan Wawrinka, he won the men's doubles tournament with his compatriot. Adding up all the titles, Roger Federer received around $130 million in prizes. With all this well-written history, the tennis player announced his retirement from the courts on September 15, 2022 and made it clear that the legacy and respect built throughout his career did not surpass the monetary values earned in matches. Roger Federer is widely admired not only for his impressive tennis achievements, but also for his exemplary elegance and sportsmanship on and off the courts. Known for his fluid and graceful playing style, Federer also stands out for his respectful conduct and integrity, demonstrating a constant commitment to fair play and praising his opponents regardless of the results. Outside of competitions, he has a significant impact through his foundation which focuses on improving children's education in undeserved regions, especially in Africa, benefiting more than 1 million children since 2003. In addition, Federer is active in various philanthropic initiatives, participating in events to raise funds for various social causes, using his influence to promote positive changes and serving as an inspiring role model for future generations in terms of generosity and community commitment. What about you? Were you already familiar with this brilliant story of Roger Federer, a ball boy who could have gotten lost in his emotions, but who knew how to deal with his weaknesses so that they did not overshadow his greatest talent? It is a great honor to tell the story of this real-life hero, and if you like this content, please leave a like to reach more people. If you enjoy following inspiring stories, feel free to subscribe to our channel and receive our next episodes of The Hero's Journey. That's all for today. I'll see you next time.